what's going on everybody out there in the world of YouTube? Hey, I have been getting a lot of questions on, because I always say I'm setting up the card shows. And if you're ever at one, stop by, see me. If you want to come behind the table, have a seat, want me to hold stuff for you, feel free to do that. I have no issues doing it. It's kind of stuff for everybody. Trust me, people do it for me when I go to shows and I pick up like, you know, eight, ten boxes of something, I'll go over, but hey, can you watch this until I'll come back around and grab it? And you guys are always good. We always do that for each other in a hobby. But with the thing is, people ask you, like, hey, what do you do to set up at a show? So this is what I've done, and by no means am I saying this is the way to do it. What I'll do is I'll find car shows that are, you know, either monthly, bi-monthly, quarterly, and I'll go to one or two, not set up at, because I want to see what people are selling and bringing there. Because my thing is, I got so much stuff, I don't want to have to buy three or four tables to manage myself. That it's, It would be insane, trust me. I did, used to do three tables years ago out of Atlanta. And just trying to manage it and bounce between everybody by yourself, it, it's a task. It's a real big task. So what I learned to do was go to these card shows, talk to dealers. I talk to people walking around and stuff just to see what they're doing, what they're buying. And what I'll also do is pay attention to trends between eBay. Well, eBay's kind of one of them broader markets. I'll look at what's going on my slabs, a lot of the Facebook groups that I belong to, see what's hot out there. Um, a lot of people will talk what they see at the bigger card shows, selling or what people didn't have and people wanted. And it gives me an idea of what to bring to them. At the same time frame, by going to those card shows, I'm able to see is there high end stuff being sold and at this day and age, to me, a high-end card is probably $5,000 or over bringing. Do I want to go out, bring them big cards, and they're just not going to sell? And, and I'm not going to joke around too much about this, but there's sometimes in areas where I go to card shows that, you know, I'm sitting there like, man, do I need to come armed walking out of this thing, you know? But it looks like a rough area around here and stuff like that. So usually I'll look at stuff like that there. And then you normally I'll find out who's running it, talk to them, you know, try to get a table for the next show or the following show after. And that's that's usually what I call my recon. Recon the sports show. We're gonna go into army terminology here. I am reconning out there. So once I get that done, I have a good feel for you know what people are looking for. I'll set up and usually I'll grab a table or two. Uh, now I'm just down to one table when I go. I grab an eight footer because I could fit everything I need onto it. And, you know, with me, I want to have a nice presentation when somebody comes there. I just don't want to have cards laying out on the table. So, yes, I do bring a showcase with me. Then I have an area for either sets or wax boxes that will sell there as well, too. Uh, I used to bring a lot of um, bargain bin boxes, but I got rid of a lot. And a lot I just listed on the website because what i learned was having change at the shows dollar bills five dollars and ten dollars bills you need it a lot and when you have people coming up buying like three dollars in cards and you got about 20 of them coming you got to hand out a lot of change so i whittled away from doing that into bringing cards that are like five ten you know and stuff and multiples like that there so that i didn't have to bring a lot of change with me that that was just me personally because then I had to come home and had a stack of dollar bills like I was at the local cl uh, little uh, girl club, you know, <laughs> and there's like two three hundred dollars in one dollar bills. And my bank's not local due to retiring from the military, not setting one up and keeping you know USA. So that that's another thing that I look at. So I I have my tablecloth display that I purchased. Uh, it can fit either six or eight cards, has extreme card breaks onto it. So no matter what kind of table they give me, if it kind of looks like it's old and been beat up, that makes it look like it's a new presentation. And I now decide, you know, do I want to bring two displays? One is like an upright one where I could still put boxes on the front and the side. or do I, And then I have my flatbed, which I usually put like the graded cards and bigger cards into it. And I get them off a site called Penzoni. Um, because he has nice wooden ones. I'm still looking for the metal ones, the aluminum ones, and the ones I've been finding just are either really expensive jeweler ones that I just don't want to do it. I know I've seen them cheaper than $150, $200 for them. So if anybody knows where you can get the aluminum ones at, drop a link in the website, email me, something like that. 
because I'm trying to find where I just get two of those and not have to worry about the wooden ones, you know, getting banged up and stuff. So then I sit there and I'll decide, you know, what all am I going to bring with me? A lot of times you'll see on the website I'll mark stuff sold, and then when I come back from the show, it's back there. Because I'm taking some of those graded cards from there, my slabs, and whatever else I've been saving for the shows to take to the card show. Um, and that's pretty much it. I bring business cards with me. You could go on to, oh, I can't remember where I bought my business cards. Vista, Vista, something like that. Uh, sells them. You can get like a thousand of them made for, you know, probably 20, 30 bucks if you have your artwork already done for it. And it's just something nice. You can have your Instagram, your website, your Facebook group, your Twitter onto it. So people remember you as well. Uh, a lot of times I've been, you know, with people, I'll have their business cards. For example, BST, I asked him for some stuff. He gave it to me and I put it out for people to get a hold of it and it's a conversation breaker when somebody comes and you don't really see a lot of people talking like oh what's this and you just have that conversation flow going because with the card show you get to see the card there you get to meet the people and you kind of have a different bond than what you will with you know versus the internet you know to where a lot of times you don't get to see them it's just a lot of typing transactions and stuff like that going back and forth so I like to have something that grabs people's attention. And then what I also do is I'll bring a couple really nice cards with me, you know. And it depends what's a PSA and what I have here, too. So I'll bring, you know, a couple $500 to $2,000 cards. Now, the show in Louisville, what I've learned, because before I used to go to Lexington and stuff, before the big hype, you know, a lot of people weren't buying $500 to $2,000 cards back, you know, two years ago. Now it's common at shows. You will see so much money going through. It's not even funny cash. Guys bring them bank zipper booklets with them and stuff, carrying tens of thousands of dollars, briefcases full of money and cards. If you haven't been to a show within the last eight to ten months, you need to go to one and just watch. And especially a bigger show. Look at Dallas, the money that's flowing through there. And I believe card shows are going to make a huge rebound here within the next six months to a year where you're going to see a lot more fluent because of the prices that the marketplaces are charging and people are going to want to try to get away from having to pay all those taxes and stuff out there is it legally right no because you're supposed to pay tax and all that stuff but we all know how it goes out there when you're dealing with cash it's just one of those things so that's pretty much what I'll do for when I go to set up the card show. I'll have my nice display, table mat, or whatever you want to call it, apron plus mat. Um, this time I'm bringing the microscope because I want to show people that microscope while I'm there on to what you can do to better grade cards. And it's going to be, you know, one of those conversation starters. I might make some new friends, some new acquaintances out there. To where, hey, we might be able to get some deals down the road. And that's that's what you want to be able to have, you know. Something that's going to catch people's eyes and they're going to talk about it at the show. You don't want to be the complete center of attention, trust me on that. But, you know, having big cards because everybody's going to want to come by, take a picture with it and stuff. And don't don't be bringing, like, if you know cards are not, most guys are only bringing five grand with them and there's, you know, 50 tables set up. They're going to be spending everywhere, so don't be bringing cards that are more than it. But that's something you got to do when you recon it. And your, your first show or two, you're going to learn to pick up that each show is going to have different people. You're going to have your regulars that come through there, new people, and what they're looking for. So you're going to be able to judge, I know these people here are going to want to buy these cards here. And I can say one thing is I don't overcharge at shows onto anything out there. Uh, you'll see a lot of people that will set up in malls. Mall card shows are probably one of the most notorious to where the stuff's really ex expensive. I like to go to the ones that are in gymnasiums, churches, event centers, stuff like that there. Because one, setup fees are low. And two, normally those people aren't high. And you'll notice the ones that are because people will just walk right by. A question I've been getting is, do I put sticker prices on my cards? No. And this is the reason why I don't. Because if people see the prices on the cards, they're not going to talk to me. 
If they are, they're going to want to lowball that card, and, it, and it's going to happen a lot when you go to shows. People are going to want to get deals. And you got to know what's hot out there. You can't do a deal on it. If it's something you've been sitting on for a while, yeah, you can probably cut a little bit of a deal, or if people are going to buy bulk and stuff. But um, you got to really, really know your market. And the biggest thing I can say is that setting up at a card show, I always have done my recon. I don't think I set up a show for probably the first three years out here. Now, granted, I probably only went to a few doors, and then I started getting more heavily involved into them. And he, I even ran them for almost a year and a half until COVID uh, wiped it all completely out for me. But I will say I try to bring a variety. I try to bring new stuff there, such as, you know, Pokemon sealed cases or displays and stuff. Because you want stuff for the younger generation that's going to want to buy. Because, you know, and I'm not going to, this is no joke. Uh, last show I did was uh, probably November. Because I didn't go to January due to a quick surgery. But I actually noticed, you know, kids that are like, well, I shouldn't say kids, teenagers, 14, 18, walking by my table, spending three, four hundred dollars and bringing out a wad of hundreds. So that's when it started, you know, it started, you know, hitting me up like, man, this stuff has really boomed here recently. Booming. And that was an eye opener. So for a car show setup, like I said, mostly my table display, I'll bring uh, definitely the flat display that really looks nice for all the higher end or my graded cards. Sometimes if, I'm, if I have a lot of top loaded cards, I will bring the other stand that can go upright. That way I can still put loose boxes and stuff around it because I want to bring a variety so I know that I'm going to sell stuff there. And at the same time frame, I'm not just leaning all on graded cards or, you know, all on wax and stuff like that there. And plus I want to bring stuff that's going to be an attention getter to where I get to hold conversations. Because a lot of times people just don't want to talk and say, hey, how you doing? How's your day going? Stuff like that. You looking for anything in particular? Sometimes people think when you say you're looking for anything in particular, you're trying to rush them. So you always got to judge the person that's in front of you and stuff like that. And, you know, and see, because a lot of times stuff like that there pushes your customers away from shows. I, I've seen it different ways. Everybody's their own personalities. But my whole thing is to bring variety. I also know that there's sometimes there's a dude selling wax there. I also know there's at least five or six people selling retail there all the time. I know that there's at least uh, my buddies bringing all the stuff for top loaders and stuff. So I don't need to bring stuff like that. So I'm going to eliminate it out because everybody's going to go to him for their top loaders, one touches, boxes, and all that. Don't need to worry about bringing it. I can sit there and actually just concentrate on sports cards and wax when I go. So that's pretty much it. I get there as soon as they open up. I had to go buy me one of them flatbed dollies, put all my stuff on it, wheel it on in there. Um, if I was also uh, to give any advice, make, bring yourself some drinks. Make friends to the guy to your left and right of you, because if you're by yourself and you got to go use the bathroom, you want somebody to watch your table, you know, especially if you don't have display cases. But I highly advise you to look professional if you go. Just don't have top loaders all over your table type deal out there, because... A lot of times it just throws people off onto it, you know. Just stuff that I've noticed and, you know, heard from other people walking by. You know, it's a nice display. I don't have stuff scattered all over the table. You know, I put some time and effort into the business. So look at, you know, things like that if you're looking to start setting up at. Look at your shows. Recon them very well. You know, you have to always invest in yourself. That's the keyest thing because, and when I say that, you want to buy stuff that incorporates your brand, you know, whether it's just something that shows your Instagram onto it, your YouTube channel, whatever it may be. So, but that's pretty much what I do for the show setups. I go through a lot of stuff. I debate on what I'm going to bring and I always bring extra stuff to fill in. That's the one thing I forgot to say. So, if I know I'm bringing, I want like 30 PSA cards in my display case, I'm making sure I have other stuff behind me so when something sells, it doesn't have a bare look to it. At the same time frame, you know, somebody might be looking for something. Like, hey, if you're looking for anything else, I got stuff behind the table. Just let me know. 
and people be like, oh man, I'm looking for Luca and LeBron. I could be like, here you go, and just put them right out in front so they could see him, touch him, type deal. And they can move on if they want it. They want it. If they don't, you know, there's plenty of other tables there. So if you guys ever have any questions on what I do for a car show setup or going to car shows, just hit me up. Let me know. I just had a lot of people hit me up on to it, and I figured this would be the best way to really put a lot of information out. I do put a lot of time into what I bring to the card shows. I probably spend, I don't know, it, before this week, probably be six hours into getting everything ready. And that's not me loading the car up. I also bring a spreadsheet that has all my prices on to it. That way, if, you know, and I do it the night before to see what recent comps are. And that way, when I go there, I already know what I want for the cards. And I know what they're selling at. I know, are they selling just on eBay? Are they selling on Facebook and Instagram at the same price? Because a lot of people come up to you, and they're going to say, well, you know, if you have a $100 card, I'll give you 80 for it. Well, you got to pay eBay fees. Correction, you still have to pay sell or sales tax fees for the state, so that wipes out half. And they know that. So just take a look at what you have, what's hot out there. You know, stick to your guns. If you want to see somebody going up and want to buy, you know, $1,200 of cards, you want to take 100 bucks off, okay, that's up to you guys. I mean, I always work deals with people that want to buy, you know, crazy lots from me. And that's usually just one of those things with the uh, card shows. All right, everybody. Well, that's pretty much it. Like I said, if you have questions, just hit me up. Um, I'll try to get some video from it off my cell phone since I always keep failing to buy a GoPro. We'll see how it looks, because the last time I tried using my cell phone, and then I brought the video onto YouTube, it, like, shrunk the screen down on the sides. But I'll see what I can do onto it for everybody. All right, you guys have a good one. I'll catch you all later.